Salawam, I want to give a praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash, and double honors to the elders, apostles of the great Nelson, they told me the truth, peace, blessing, and sight, to the hopeful elects. <coughs> and um, I'm just going to be speaking about the mark of the beast. <coughs> I'm probably going to the judgment too. And um, my CBM missiles. But we'll see where the spirit of the Lord takes me. But, um, but first I want to go into a dream that I had, I literally had this dream, I had this dream um, probably like an hour ago, I had this dream an hour ago and I just quickly wanted to um, bring this dream out first, for reason being um, it's basically a, a spiritual dream concerning um, the MOTB. <coughs> And um, it basically starts off. Um, I was in, I was in my house, and um, my wife, which I don't, I don't have a wife, but in the dream I had a wife. So my wife was helping my mom, basically um, cook food for the family, and. Um, What's it called? Um, and my mom's fiance, my mom's fiance's um, son, he was also there. My brothers were there. Um, they were in the living room at, at the time, and I was just um, in the kitchen looking out, out, looking out at the window, trying to see if I could see any chariots. And um, <laughs> basically, what happened was. Basically, basically what happened was um, I went into the living room because I went into the living room because um, I heard I heard on the TV the words MOTB so I ran into the living room and what I'm seeing is um, I see a senate table a senate table, loads of chairs, it was basically empty and um, the news, the news presenters the news presenters um, they were basically saying on the TV um, we're excited to um, to basically um, yeah, they were saying um, they're excited to basically unveil the MLTB and that it's finally here that, that's, that was the words of one of the presenters. She was happy, she was excited, she had a big smile on her face. And um, and after she said that, after she said um, the MOTB is finally here, um, I was basically shouting around, jumping around in my, in my living room, and I was saying, um, I was basically saying, I told you, I told you. See, now it's finally here. Now you can't say anything. This is prophecy. And then, um, <laughs> and then my my mom's fiance's son was like, he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand it. How how the MLTB is here. And it's basically saying he didn't understand the spirit of the Lord. And then like, I mentioned to him, um, the spirit of the Lord is basically how I'm able to pull precepts from thin air, and how I'm able to go from over from one book to another, and basically um, link it up, basically link it up, and basically give the understanding through precept upon, upon precept. And I said, while I'm speaking, the precepts come into my mind, and I can pull them. And then, um, and then I said to him. Um, I said it's the same reason, it's the same reason that I'm able to go out to the highways and byways and speak, speak the Bible, basically, and basically uh, teach it on the highways and byways. And then um, I'm gonna cut the dream short because um, after that, um, 
it really doesn't concern anyone else but me because um it was kind of an intimate moment after that so um yeah i'm gonna go into the scriptures now i'm gonna start off with um with um revelation chapter 13 And this is um Revelation 13 and 12. And it says um and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly room was healed. And um exercising the power of the first beast which the, the beast is talking about is the pagan Roman Empire and um, them exercising those powers is basically um, bringing those laws, bringing the ways of the pagan Roman Empire back to life so for example um, draconian laws that was a part of um, the pagan Roman Empire which draconian laws is goes into um, harsh laws so, if he did something minor, the judgment would be put to death. For an example, um, you're basically, um, if you stole, you'll get put to death. If you did a small thing, you would basically die. And um, it makes them worship the image of the beast by basically following the ways or the ordinances of the Roman Empire <clears throat> and um, if you don't follow the ways of the pagan Roman Empire or the beast the judgment is basically death and basically um, an example is the vaccine when, when they gave um, people the ultimatum you have to take the vaccine or you can't live. They're going to do the exact same thing. On verse 13 it says, um, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven and the earth in the sight of men. And that's going into um, those missiles or those atomic bombs that was dropped from Hiroshima or Nagasaki. And, um, and then it says and deceive them that dwell on the earth by means of these miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live and um, the way he's able to do these miracles it's basically, um, it's basically through technology. For example, um, the MOTB or the the RFID or RFID micro CHIP implant. Um, for an example, some of the miracles they've done with this technology is um, they're able to give people their sight back. Um, those that have um trouble remembering or have um. What's the word called? Um, or memory problems. Those that have memory problems, they're able to um, basically give their memory back or give their sight back. And this is basically just some of the miracles we're going to deceive the people with. <clears throat> I can go up to First Maccabees one and forty-three. And this is basically an example of what Esau's trying to do in today's society is basically um, establish the new world order, establish the fake kingdom of heaven on earth. 
Why? Because they can't receive the kingdom of heaven from Yahweh Hashem HaShai or nor the promises. So they're trying to establish it in um in a carnal way with technology. And this is first Maccabees 143 and it says, Yea, many also of the Israelite can set it to his religion. Actually now let me go up. Yeah, first Maccabees 1 and 41 and it says Moreover, the king Antiochus wrote his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws so all the heathen agree to the fall according to the commandment of the king and that's what they're trying to do this time they're trying to make everyone leave their laws leave their religions and leave their beliefs so that they can consent or come under one consent to um to the new world order and um and that's what these religions are about these religions are basically uh, disguises to capture the people so when um these elite edomites want to bring their mot bring their new world order there's less resistance because what what they all what do all the world's religions teach you? To accept everything and be one with each other. Basically be at peace. And it says, um, Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judea that they should follow the strange, la strange laws of the land and for, forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days and pollute the sanctuary of the holy people set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts and this time they're trying to sacrifice the people by making them take the MOTB And it says, um, and whosoever will not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. And it says, um, and it says, um, in the self same manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over the all the people, commanding the cities. Come in the cities of Judah and sacrifice city by city. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to whip everyone that forsook the law and so they committed evils in the land. And basically, man, that was a, that's just um, an example of what these Edomites are trying to do again. So, like the scriptures say, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah, and this is Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 and it says The thing that hath been is it is that which shall be and that which is done is what shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun Is there anything whereof it may be said See, this is new it have been already of old time which was before us there is no remembrance of former things neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after so the example I gave of um, King Antiochus trying to establish his um, new, world, new world order and allow everyone to be one and basically bow down to his image is it's exactly what they're trying to do now Hence what it said um Hence what it said um what was there again? 
is basically causing all to bow down to the image and worship the image. And if you don't worship the image, you're basically going to be um, put to death. Yeah, so like I was saying, um, this is Revelation 13 and 15, and it says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So you see, just like in First Maccabees, for um, First Maccabees um. 1 and 50 we talked about how those that didn't consent to um to the commandment of the king shall be put to death and in revelation 13 and 15 it also talks about those who don't consent to the image of the king shall be put to death again i remember i read there's no new thing under the sun that all these things have happened before and um how the image of the beast is speaking is basically um, through its system and through its senate. Um, even that um, capital building over there in Babylon or America, that goes back to um, the capital Leon Hill building and even the Olympics. And that all goes back to the pagan Roman Emperor. We can get um, Daniel 7 and 8 and it goes into the, the beast and the beast system. Yeah, and it says, I consider the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn. And that little horn is um, <clears throat> basically Babylon or America. And it says, before whom there was three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And those, um, those, first, those first three horns that were plucked up was... Um, Basically, the Spanish, the British, and the French. And it says, um, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. And, um, and basically, um, how the pagan Roman Empire came back to came back into um, power was through. Babylon or through that little horn they had to get rid of the competition who were um, the French yeah the British Spanish and French they had to remove them out of the picture and that's what they did they removed them out of the picture and they basically had the land to themselves so they could basically um, bring, bring the revival of the pagan Roman Empire back Back to um, Revelation. Revelation um, 13 and 16 and it says, oh yeah, it also mentions um, in 1st Maccabees um, 1 and 43, no 1 and 41, um, it says that the, the, the king wrote to to the whole kingdom that all should be one people and that's basically what revelation 13 and 16 is saying and it says um and it causes all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and um the ruler of the beast system is basically the nation Esau Edom is making technology to be basically put into your hand and into your forehead and uh, the one who actually patterned the, R the RFID micro CHIP is a guy called um, Charles w Walton yeah a guy, a guy called Charles Walton who's um, an Edomite and <laughs> even uh, brain chip is Elon Musk another Edomite so it's these Edomites trying to um, basically um, bring a false kingdom into 
and the earth. So instead of the Lord having his kingdom, they want to set up their kingdom of wickedness. But um Yeah man. Starting with the um the elites or the Rothschilds or the twelve banking families, they basically <coughs> own the world. They own the world, they have the world's riches and they're still not happy. They have more than the heart can want or the more than the heart could wish. <clears throat> and we can go to, um, I think it's Joel 9 and 24. <coughs> uh, yeah, and it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? And I've gone into Esau Edom. Because um, before the pagan Roman Empire went down, <coughs> they conquered. They conquered the known world. They conquered the known world. And um, this time, now that the pagan Roman Empire has come back, now they have power over the entire earth. Because remember, it talked about. It talked about um, the woman or the whore rising upon the sky because of the beast and um the beast being NATO and the EU and the whole that sit on it is um America and America basically rules over these nations <laughs> and like it says in Malachi 104 this is who we find out who the wicked is. Because remember, it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And it says, Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we'll return and build the desolate places. And that's what that's what they're saying, man. Literally in Babylon they were saying, um They were saying build back better. They were basically saying build back better. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build what I will throw down, and they shall call them. They should call them the border. Yeah, they should call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. So the Lord has a righteous anger towards Esau Edom. And those are the same people who are trying to cause all to put the MOTB inside them. Yeah, and um, this is basically um, this is basically talking about Esau Edom and how he has power over the whole earth. This is Second Address eleven and thirty seven, and it says, "And I beheld and lo, as it were a roaring lion chased out of the wood, and I saw that he had sent out a man's voice unto the eagle, and said, Hear thou, I will war." I will talk with thee, and the highest shall say unto thee, Are not thou it that remainest of the four beasts? And that fourth beast is um is Babylon or America. So we know this is talking about Esau Eden. Because they're the ones who are ruling right now. And it says um Whom I made to reign in my world, you see. So let me just start from Fetan again. It says, Are not thou it that remainest of the fourth beast whom I made to reign in my world that end of their times might come through them? 
So like it says, man, Jacob, no, um, <laughs> Esau is the end, in, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of, of which, which followeth. Actually, I might as well get that, man. Yeah, it's second entry six and nine, and it says, "For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of that of that followers." So, <laughs> like it talks about how Edom was given power to reign in the earth. So yeah, I'm gonna read 30, verse thirty-nine again. It says, "Um." <coughs> It says, um, art not, art not thou, it thou remainest of the four beasts, because the other three were taken out, they were brought down, but the fourth beast, being the revival of the pagan Roman Empire, which is basically Babylon, or America, and it says, um, <clears throat> who I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them, so the end is going to come through Esau. And like you said in second address six and nine man, Esau is the end of the world. And that's what when that's when um when the Lord talks about him coming back in the end of the world. Which basically means an end of the age. Because um there's three ways of saying the world in um in the Bible. Because um if you go back to the Greek, it mentions um it mentions um, Oinkinemi, which is the entire habit of um, cosmos, which is pertaining to a particular, particular thing. Basically, John 3 16, that's cosmos, which that pertains to the Israelites. And then um, the age being eon. So when the Lord said he's going to come at the end of the world or the end of the age, or the end of the age, that's, that, that word there, world, is, is eon. And it says, and the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past and had power over the world with great fearfulness. You see, they had power over the world. And who has power over the world? What did Job 9 and 24 say? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked man. And it says, um, with great fearfulness, and over the whole compass of the earth, with, with much wicked opp oppression. And who, that, who does that sound like? It sounds like the so-called white people that we see in rulership today. <laughs> and I'm going to read it again, man, when this card go past. And it says, and the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past, and had power over the world with great fearfulness. And over the whole compass of the earth and with much wicked oppression and so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit that's basically the so-called white people man the the the, 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 um, the throw nothing but deceit and lies into to the earth to bring forth their agendas that's what they're doing now man And then verse 41 it says, For the earth has thou not judged with truth. And that's why um and that's why um judgment never goes forth because these Edomites are not capable of ruling or or um enacting righteous judgment because they're the wicked. It says, For thou hast afflicted the meek, thou hast hurt the peaceable. Thou hast loved liars and destroyed the dwellings of them that bore forth fruit. An example of them destroying um dis destroyed the dwellings of them that bore forth fruit with these other nations, man. And mainly the Israelites. But um for an example, um this 911, they literally deceived the whole world into believing that. Saddam Hussein um, basically had weapons of mass destruction 
and it was those Muslim countries that committed the act of destroying the the twin you know the twin buildings by one of them <clears throat> and then what did Esau Edom do he went up into their land he destroyed their land took their resources and left them with nothing <clears throat> and has cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm <laughs> literally but Esau Edom he basically um, if you haven't done nothing to him he's going to destroy you man and it reminds me of um, Gad and Reuben Gad and Reuben my, um, they took Esau Edom in and they basically broke their covenant and betrayed them Yeah, might as well carry on reading on there. This is verse 43. Um, it says, Therefore is thy wrongful dealing come up, come up unto the highest, and thy pride unto the mighty. The highest also have looked upon the proud times, and behold, they are ended, and his abominations are fulfilled. And therefore appear no more, thou eagle, nor thy horrible wings, nor thy wicked feathers, nor thy malicious heads, nor thy hurtful claws, nor all thy vain body, that all the earth may be refreshed and may return, being delivered from the violence, from thy violence, and that she may hope for, for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. <coughs> and that's talking about when the Lord comes back, He's going to make everything new again. I remember it mentioned the eagle. Yeah, and this is Obadiah 1 and 3 and it says The pride of thine heart has deceived thee So the pride of thy mind has deceived thee That thou that dwellest in the castle of the rock Basically being these cavemen Because that's where they came from The rock Whose habitation is high that safe in his heart You shall bring me down to the ground Thou that exalt thyself as the eagle and through thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. And um, that basically happened when. That basically happened when Esau tried to exalt himself before the throne of the Most High, which is um, when he sent those space stations and satellites up into the earth, I mean, up into the upper atmosphere. That's when um, they started going down. And it says, um, If he came to thee, if brothers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the great great grapples came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? But you see, with Esau, he just takes everything, man. Every every little bit the tape, and it says, um, "How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought off?" And that's basically by um by the mouth of the holy prophets, man, basically um exposing Esau Edom and his wicked ways. <clears throat> and it says, "All the men of thy confederacy have bought thee." Even to the border, the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee, that they, that they, 
they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. And says, Shall not, not shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men of Edom and understanding out the mouth of Esau? And the mighty men of Taman shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. So yeah, man. The Lord's got these Edomites where he wants them. <coughs> so we head on back over to Revelation. <coughs> Right in, um, oh yeah, I was talking about um, the pride of Esau, the pride of Esau, Psalms, Psalms 24, so, and this is basically going into these elites, man. And when I was talking about how they have more than a heart could wish. They have more than a heart could wish. They have more than a heart could wish. And not only that, they have the entire earth and they're still not happy. So now they're trying to take people's souls or people's spirits, man. Like having the earth, having all, all the nations in subjection isn't enough. Now they want to own you. But basically, pertaining to the Israelites because that's who they're trying to get and the reason why they're doing it to everyone is because the Israelites are scattered amongst all nations and there could be Israelites in these other nations so Esau's not taking any chances <clears throat> but yeah this is um Psalm, Psalm 73 and 3 and it says but I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked for there, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. For an example, um, they can basically get away with murder and taking people's lands and destroying them. And they don't have to go through these hardships like other people do. Or like how the Israelites are. Why? Because they have the world's riches and they own everything. And it says, um, therefore pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. And that's exactly what they do, man. They're prideful. They bring nothing but violence. <laughs> and that reminds me of Gan and Reuben, man. When these Edomites came, they gave them blankets with smallpox to take them down man and weaken them and then what did they do they spoiled Gad and Reuben took their women raped them killed the babies put them to death and then threw them on ships and then basically sold them off it says the eyes stand up with fatness they have more than a heart could wish they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. So they lift themselves up and speak high of themselves. Why? Because they have everything. That's why they do it. Because they're able to go into other people's lands and take whatever they have. They basically think they're gods on the earth. And it says they set their mouth. They say they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walking through the earth. Therefore his people He said therefore his people return hither and waters of a four cup are wrung out to them. Because remember the Lord said he's going to cause them to drink of the wine of the wrath of God man, which is basically slavery. <clears throat> and they say, How did God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? But these are the ungodly who prosper in the world and they're increasing in their riches. And that's going into these one and their elites who are known as the Rothschilds. And they basically own the world. 
They're increasing their riches. They can do whatever they want and no one no one's gonna know. Why? Because they're hiding plain sight. And that's why um King David was talking about hiding from the secret council of the wicked. Being the secret councils that Esau has man. And um there's also Habakkuk 2 and 5 man and it says yeah also because he transgressed by wine by his philosophies he is a proud man neither keepeth at home who enlarges who enlarges his desire as hell and when I was talking about how you can't be satisfied <coughs> his desire is as hell man as, as, as deep as the earth goes man it can't be satisfied man it just keeps going and going they're not even going to be satisfied when they have people chipped up and um <clears throat> enlarge with his desire as hell and that and is as death and cannot be satisfied but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people so you see is governing is governing um, the nations and all people unto himself <clears throat> And that's what Revelation 13 and 16 talking about. Him causing all small and great, rich and poor, free and bound to receive a mark. He's do, doing it because he can't be satisfied. Like there's no peace in these devils, man. There's no peace in these devils. Now let me head back onto uh, Revelation 13. And 17 and it says, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And um, a damn devil had to run right in front of me. I would have stepped forward, they could have ran behind me, but the space, but the devil decides to run right in front of the video. Ah, oh, these damn Edomites, man. They're all gonna get him, man. And, um, yeah, Revelation 13 and 17 is basically um, marking the people and claiming them as his property. And, um, they're basically gonna cut off all options so that the only option is to bow down to the beast. And that's why you need to have your Hawa Bashim Hawa Shine, man. Because he's the one, he's the one who's gonna keep you from um, having to bow down to the beast. So, um, like I said, he's gonna cut off all options, so that the only option is to take the MLCB or die. But for the elect, they're gonna be protected by Yahweh Hashem, Hashem. 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 And this is basically what they're saying, man. It's equal 35 and 9, and it says, I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it whereas the Lord was there. And it says, Therefore, as I live, Saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them, and I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. Yeah, in verse 10, when that word goes into possess, that word there is talking about basically being seized or taken or raped. So these either might trying to take us, man, forcefully. <clears throat> um And this is basically an example of what these Edomites are trying to do to us, man. That like the Lord said there's no there's nothing new under the sun. <clears throat> and this is Exodus 21 and 5. And it says, And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, 
I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear. Shall bore his ear free with an oar. And he shall serve him forever. So that's what these Edomites are trying to do. They're trying to give us a digital oar so that we may serve him forever. But the Lord has um has men that's not going to bow down to Baal. Romans 11 and 4 and it says But what say the answer of God unto him I've reserved to myself 7,000 men basically a complete number who have not bowed the knee to the image of the earth and um so yeah man the Lord is going to keep the elect from taking this MOTB Like it says on um, The world to try Yeah, Revelation 3 and 10 and it says Because thou hast kept The word of my patience I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation Which shall come upon all the world To try them that dwell upon the earth so, and that's, and that, that word, the world, is going into economy, so it's going to try everyone, man. But those of the elect are going to escape. Yeah, and this is Revelation 13 and 18. It says, Here's wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast. For it's a number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. And that 603 score and 6 is going into Kaiser's stigma. And, um. Yeah, and, um. The reason why John said, Him that have understanding, or the Holy Spirit, Count the understanding of, count the understanding, or count the number of the beast, so I say, because um he was warning those who have the understanding, because um Esau Edom is subtle with his um numerology, he likes to throw his um his six 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 out there. For example, um when everyone was on lockdown, they get talking about um. They kept using the, the number six, and even they mentioned um, they mentioned six days, six weeks, and six years. As you know, six <laughs> six days, six weeks, and six months. So they just threw their sixty-six right in your face. And these are the same Edomites who are who are going to be doing this. And um, that six-six-six, the car is like stigma. That basically goes into um, yeah. That kai size thing that basically goes into um, <coughs> to mark or to be pricked or branded upon the body. Like um, even in um, the ancient times, like when these generals, um, these generals were basically um, they would mark their soldiers. They would put um they would basically brand them and um yeah and even in even if you look into the strongs of um the strongs of the interlinear of Galatians six and seventeen it goes into um it goes into that that stigma basically to be pricked so it's a part of thing that these Edomites are going to do and um, even in Isaiah 36 and 6 um, 
if we go into the if we go into the intermingling of the strongs it also has the word stigma and it talks about um, your hand being pierced <clears throat> so it's a carnal thing that these Edomites are going to do they're literally going to be putting um, uh, a delivery device into your into your hand, pushing it down and delivering that MOTB into your hand. <clears throat> and this is basically um, <clears throat> and this is basically what's going to happen to those that take the MOTB. This is Revelation 14 and 10. It says, The shame shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, into the cup of his righteous anger. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And that's going to happen when um, the elect are taken up in those chariots and they're hid but for a little moment. Yeah, like it says in Isaiah 26 and 20, it says, Come, my people, enter down into thy chambers and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So that indignation that the Lord's talking about is well worth free. When his missiles go flying off, <coughs> when his missiles go flying off, we're going to have to hide from these weapons of indignation. And then that's when the Lord comes back and he's going to grab us up, man. And then that's when we get to look over the sea of glass and see the burning and see those being burnt up. And that's what it talks about, those being burnt up in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. It says, For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their, for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So like I was saying, um, the lights are going to be beamed up. Yeah, like it says um, in Revelation 11 and 12, it says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, being the chariots, and the enemies beheld them. So the Israelites, the Israelites or the elect of Israel is going to go up, and those who are left are going to basically watch it. And it's going to be like um, Independence Day when the Lord comes, his chariot is going to cover the entire earth. And this is basically what the elect, the elect are going to see when they're beamed up into those chariots, when they're hiding themselves from that indignation. All those nuclear missiles. It says, this is Revelation 5, no, 15 and 2, and it says, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having hearts of God. So, yeah, man, we're going to be above the firmament looking down. Basically, and we're going to be with the Lord and with the holy angels looking down 
looking down at the people being burnt up. Because like it says, man, the people are going to see they're like getting beamed up, man. So going back to Revelation 14 and um, year 10 it says the same shall drink of the wine of God the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his righteous anger or his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment Send it up forever and ever, and that's basically going to happen when these other nations come together to fire their missiles upon America, and that's going to happen after um, the MOT the MOTB is made mandatory. And it says, um, they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and who and whosoever receives the mark of his name, basically being that six six six. <clears throat> now to, um, to get the scriptures about the missiles yeah and this is revelation 9 and 15 it said the four angels were loose which are prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year to save the third part of men and then it says um and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 and I heard a number of them and that's going into 200 million nuclear missiles and um and thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and jasmine from brimstone and the heads of horses were the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire smoke and brimstone and that's going into um the warheads that's going into the warheads um out of the warheads issue fire smoke and brimstone because um when the icbms fired off the only thing that's left is the warhead because um there's stages of an icbm um it comes out the silo as a full missile then it goes all the way up to the upper atmosphere um and then parts of it fly off and then when it's coming back down, it still has um, a propulsion system that's pushing it, and it's going to be traveling. It's, it's going to be traveling fast. And when it comes down, the only thing that's left is the warhead, and that's what's going to cause the damage. And it says, by D3, was the third part of men killed by the fire and, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. And yeah, and that, and that brimstone, it's like I was saying, is the warheads. And it says for the, for the powers in their mouth, being the warheads. And then their tails, for their tails are like unto serpents. And the serpent's tails being, um, the serpent's tails being the smoke trail that's left behind. And had heads, and with them they do hurt. Why? Because um, <laughs> these warheads are going to be painful. Like you said, um, the people that took the MOTB are going to feel this fire, man. And we know um, John was talking about nuclear missiles because um, Joel also saw this too. Yes, Joel 2 and 3 and it says, A fire devours before them and behind them a flame burneth. Basically, Basically going into the missiles because like I was saying before them is the actual warhead where the fire issues out and behind them is um, the propulsion system what causes the missile to fly and take off and it says the land is at the God of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness yeah and nothing shall escape them why because when these missiles go off the the heat 
the impact of the heat and how fast it travels is as fast it's faster than the speed of light so you ain't escaping and then um, like John also said that the appearance was as horses that's what he said he saw the appearance of the horses man and he talked about the fire burnt someone and smoke and then Joel also said um the appearance of them is as appearance of horses and as horsemen show how they run so they're, they're, they're going to be like um like in Braveheart where the horses are lined up together that's how the missiles are going to be they're going to be rained down upon Babylon <coughs> and this is all going to take place in World War 3 yes like in um, Revelation 9 12 it says one war is past meaning the first destruction or the first war is past and behold there come two woes more hereafter so what are those two woes world war 2 and world war 3 but then in revelation 11 and 14 it says the second war is past and behold the third war cometh quickly so world war 1 and world war 2 is past but the third war cometh quickly and that's when um that's when the Lord's going to come back in that third wall and we know this this next wall that's coming is going to be with burning them through the fire because in Isaiah 9 and 5 it says for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood but this shall be with burning them through the fire which is those nuclear missiles and they're going to be used when these nations come together against Babylon even Peter was talking about the destruction or the day of the Lord and it says second Peter 3 and 6 and it says whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water perished being the first death but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved reserve them to fire against the day of judgment and perdition unto ungodly men and that's going to happen um, when those missiles are flying off and facing the judgment. And then it says, be, But beloved, be not thinking of one thing that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, would, not willing that any shall perish, but, that should, but all shall come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, being those missiles, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's going to be melted with um with this fire. Especially Babylon, the Lord said um, it should be destroyed like, um, like Sodom and Gomorrah. And it says, um, Isaiah 13 and 19, it says, But in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know they did that with fire and brimstone. And this time with America is going to do it with fire again, the nuclear missiles. <coughs> and it says it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelling from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts and desert shall lie there. And the houses shall be full of broken creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satan shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses and their dragons in their pleasant places. 
and her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged and the Lord's not going to prolong Babylon <clears throat> being there anymore because like you said um, um yeah <laughs> like you said um the sins have reached unto heaven This is Revelation 18 and 4 it says I heard another voice from heaven <coughs> yeah. well, My voice is getting um, kind of dry man So yes, like I was saying, um, Revelation 18 and 4 it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you not be partakers of our sins, and you receive not of her plagues. And um, the last plague is um, it places the mutual missiles. It says, For our sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered our iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you. And double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. And it says, How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow will give her. For she have said in her heart, I see a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no see no sorrow. Therefore shall that place come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned. The fire, the strong is the Lord God who judges her. So like I was saying, Babylon's going to be burned with fire, man. Destroyed by those ICBM missiles that come from a far country. And the clues in their name being um inter and continental. That's that's the whole point right there. These these, these missiles have ranges that can um <clears throat> the missile could go around the earth and come back. So these missiles are going to hit where they're going to hit. <coughs> For the lost spirits want to be inside them, man. I remember it talked about the raven not being able to pitch their tent there no more. Why? Because the land's going to be destroyed. And it says, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall be well high and lament for her. But when they see the smoke of her burning, so like I was saying, America is going to be destroyed by thermal nuclear missiles. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city of Babylon, America, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. And that's why they're going to be weeping and bewailing. Because of these investments that they had in America, it's all going to be taken away. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all and all fine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and of iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments. <laughs> and actually, you know, it's talking about those Arabians, man. <laughs> Literally, man, over here, even in the UK, but they have those, um, those those ointment things 
like you roll it on your hand and it's, it smells nice man and it says um and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men and it says and the fruits and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee and all the things which were dainty and godly and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all why because it's going to be destroyed man and the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand far off for the fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas the great city being america or babylon the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet basically comparing it to um, these luxurious things <clears throat> basically saying how great Babylon is and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great riches is come to naught <laughs> and every shipmaster and all the company of ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city is like unto this great city and they cast dust on their heads basically symbolizing the the morning and cried weeping away and saying alas alas that great city where when we were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour was she made desolate and what did the Lord say about Babylon he said um going to overthrow it like Sodom and Gomorrah which and we know that was being overthrown by um, basically fire and brimstone and then the Lord went on to say um, how it's going to be made um, made into a desolate wilderness and it shall never be inhabited <clears throat> then it says um, rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for God have avenged you on her, and that's coming. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon or America be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So, like I was saying, man, it's going to be destroyed and be a desert. Yeah, I'm going to read these last few scriptures and close out. And it says, um, and this is basically, um, actually, you know what, let me get another one. This is Ezekiel 38 and 1, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog. In the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O God, and chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into their jaws. And that's going into um, going into these Russians or the Russia. And then the Lord's going to turn them back into that warlike country, like during the times of the Soviet Union or. The USSR. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army and horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords or handling guns. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Goma, Turkey, and all his bands, and the house of Togana of the North Quarters and all his bands and many people with you so yeah man the Lord wants to rise up these nations to join with Russia so they can destroy Babylon and NATO is going to join them too like I said um,
In Jeremiah 15 and 14 it says Put yourselves in array against Babylon Round about all ye that bend the bow Shoot her and spare no arrows For she has sinned against the Lord Shout against her round about She has given her hand and foundations are falling Her walls are falling down For it is the vengeance of the Lord That takes vengeance upon her As she has done due unto her And then on the Jeremiah 15 and 20, 50 and 29 it says call, you, call together the archers against Babylon or America being these other nations or you that bend the bow or those that have um, nuclear capability camp against it round about let none of their off escape recompense her according to her work according to all that she has done do unto her if she has been proud against the Lord and against the Holy One of Israel And I think I'll close out on this scripture. <clears throat> Actually, um, yeah, second Ezra 16 and 30 it says For strong is his right hand that bends the bow, his arrows that he shoot with a shot, and shall not miss. When they begin, they be shot into the ends of the world and that's going into those ICBMs being fired off on them silos and it says behold the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth the fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it, is cons till it consumes the foundations of the earth like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again what was me, what was me, who shall believe me in those days? <coughs> and answer to that is Yahweh Bashim Haushai, man. And that's why we gotta do what the Yahweh Bashim Haushai says. And do what is asked of us. And do it to the best of our ability, man. And pray for, pray for short days as well. Um, <coughs> I wanna give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Haushai. And um, Shalom, man.